Taj Mahal is a mausoleum built by the Mughal emperor Shah Jahan in the memory of his queen Arjumant Banu Begum also known as Mamtaz Mahal on the right bank of the river Yamuna in Agra it houses the tomb of Mamtaz Mahal and the Mughal emperor Shah Jahan himself who commissioned it in January 1632 the Taj Mahal is the queen of architecture other buildings might be as famous but no other as so consistently admired for a beauty that is seen as both feminine and regal says Giles Tillotson a writer and lecturer on Indian history and architecture There have recently been debates and even pleas filed in the court by the Hindu nationalist arguing whether the Taj Mahal is a Mughal tomb or a Hindu temple. According to these Hindu nationalist, the Taj Mahal was actually a Shiva temple called Tejo Mahalya. There are other conspiracy theories as well, which says that the mausoleum was built over a temple and it was still a part of the basement. According to some other viral myths. it was actually built after destroying the temple well all these claims are not only wrong but also baseless there is no evidence that proves that taj mahal was a temple or tejo mahal so let's trace where all these myths come from well most of these conspiracy theories and myths around the taj mahal come from a man called pushottam nagesh ok P N Oak was a writer who wrote several books on Indian history and claimed to be a historical revisionist. In 1989 he published a book called Taj Mahal a true story in which he mentioned that the term Taj Mahal is a popular mispronunciation of the ancient Hindu name Tejo Mahal and that it was built centuries before Shah Jahan. He also believed that the Taj Mahal was originally planned and built as a Shiva temple. In his words, our research has firmly established that the term Taj Mahal is a mal pronunciation of the ancient Hindu name Tejo Mahal and that it was built centuries before Shah Jahan. We have cited relevant evidence suggesting that the Taj Mahal could be the crystal white Shiva temple. built during the reign of raja parmardi dev as evidenced by sanskrit inscription the term tejo mahal that has survived generations of muslim vandalism its octagonal shape and the vedic emblems that have been inlaid in it are indication that the taj mahal was originally planned and built as a shiva temple consecrating shiva's tejo ling in its octagonal sanctorum surrounded by a gem studded gold railing later when muslim raiders from mohammad ghori onwards ransacked and desecrated it the magnificent tejo mahal continued to be used as a palace by whosoever ruled agra that could be the explanation why shah jahan's court chronicle the badshah nama acknowledges it as manzil e raja man singh that is raja man singh's mansion thus Raja Man Singh was the last Hindu owner in the checkered and scarred history of the Taj Mahal. This is nothing more than a fairy tale. According to the contemporary Mughal historians Muhammad Amin Kazvini, Abdul Hamid Lahori and Muhammad Saleh, the land where the Taj Mahal is built belonged to Raja Man Singh, who was a trusted general of Mughal emperor Akbar the Great. At the time of its acquisition The land was in the possession of his grandson Raja Jai Singh. According to the previously mentioned historians, there was either a house or a mansion or a manzil built on it, but certainly not a Hindu temple. According to Kazvini, Raja Jai Singh as a token of his sincerity and devotion donated the land or zameen and considered this to be the source of happiness. However, in exchange for his donation, Jai Singh was awarded what Kazvini calls a lofty house or khanae ala but referred to by both lahori and saleh as a lofty mansion or manzil which belonged to the crown estates we will see a farman or imperial command issued to raja jai singh by shah jahan for this reward of the loyalty mansion in a bit giles tillotson an expert on indian history and architecture 
calls Pian Oak's claim as the startling piece of pseudo scholarship. He says that Oak's book is plainly a work of fantasy and the author's barely concealed motive to denigrate Islamic civilization is distasteful. In Giles Tillotson's words, P. N. Oak's starting point is the passage in the Badshah Nama describing Shah Jahan's purchase of the site for the Taj, land that belonged through inheritance to the Maharaja of Amir, Jai Singh. The passage clearly states that there was a house or mansion or manzil on this land, which had been built by ancestor of Jai Singh. So the Maharaja received compensation in the form of comparable properties. Oak interprets this to mean that the existing house became the tomb, with the addition merely of a few Quranic inscription over its doorways. The older palace was converted to its new use. Oak claims that the Taj Mahal was perhaps built in the 4th century to serve as a palace. But later, in the same book, he seems to drop this claim, giving the building instead a 12th century date and an original function as a Shiva temple. However, no evidence is offered by Oak in support of its redating by 13th century. The 4th century is safely pre-Islamic. According to Tilotson, the only stone architecture surviving in India from such an early date is either rock-cut or monolithic, not structural. The technical know-how to create a building with the structural form of the Taj simply did not exist in pre-Mughal India. It would be like assigning a 4th century date to a photograph or a combustion engine. According to Oak, Muslim rulers in India did not raise even a single mansion, canal, fort, palace, tomb or mosque, whether of red stone or marble. They only appropriated Hindu buildings and misused them. If it is not a Mughal building, how does it come to bear such strong affinities with other Mughal buildings, such as their earlier tomb and Shah Jahan's palaces in Agra and Delhi? Oak has his answer ready. The fact that it looks like them is proof that they too are all converted Hindu buildings. According to W. E. Begley and Z. A. Desai, once there must have existed hundreds of Mughal documents pertaining to the construction of the Taj Mahal, ranging from daily pay slips for vast numbers of workmen to royal farmans issued periodically by Shah Jahan, but only four of such farmans have survived. The first one was issued on 20th of September 1632 by Shah Jahan in which he request Raja Jai Singh to expedite shipments of marbles, almost certainly intended for Akbarabad or Agra by advancing wages to the stone cutters and rental for carts. At the time of this farman, about nine months had passed since the construction of Taj Mahal first started in January 1632. Marble would have been requested well in advance of installation since the rough stone slabs would still require extensive work after reaching Akbarabad. The second farman was issued on 3rd of February 1633, which is less than five months after the preceding document. In this farman also, Shah Jahan urges Raja Jai Singh to expedite the shipment of large quantities of marble from the Makrana quarries. The third farman was issued on 28th of December 1633. This document is a contemporary certified copy of the now missing original farman. In this farman, Shah Jahan bestows Raja Jai Singh the title to four pieces of property in Akbarabad, referred to as estates or mansions, in exchange for the Haveli, formerly belonging to his grandfather Raja Man Singh, which he had voluntarily donated for the construction of the tomb of Mamtaz Mahal. This further clarifies that the land on which the Taj Mahal was being built had only a mansion built by the ancestor of Jai Singh, not a Shiva temple. The endorsements on the reverse side of the Farman mention that the Raja had earlier received a different crown property. The Haveli of the late Shahzada Khanam, whose identity is unknown, but it is not stated whether the bequest was also part of the agreed exchange. The fourth Farman was issued on 30th of June 1637 which contains a stern order to Raja Jai Singh not to allow his own agents to carry on quarrying activities at Makrana that would interfere with the continued shipments of marble to Akbarabad. These four farmans issued by Shah Jahan clearly indicate that Taj Mahal is neither a 4th nor a 13th century building 
built either as a temple or a palace. It was certainly built in the 17th century on the orders of Shah Jahan as a mausoleum for his wife. Also, no temple was demolished by Shah Jahan to build the Taj Mahal over it. Ustad Ahmad Lahori was the architect of the Taj Mahal. According to Rana Safavi, his son Lutfullah Mohandis wrote Diwane Mohandis in which he describes his father as the architect of the Taj Mahal and Red Fort. All the arguments of Oak are baseless. He fails to provide any solid evidence to prove his theory. Not just the Taj Mahal. Oak also claimed that the Kaaba in Mecca, the Vatican in Rome, the Notre Dame in Paris and the Westminster Abbey in the UK were all Hindu temples. In the year 2000, he himself had approached the Supreme Court of India to get the theory Taj Mahal built on a Shiva temple, official recognition. But the court rejected this as a B in the bonnet theory. In November 2015, the Union Culture Ministry of India clarified in the Lok Sabha, the lower house of the Indian parliament, that there was no evidence of any temple at the Taj Mahal. Apart from that, in its statement to a local court in Agra in 2017, the Archaeological Survey of India also stated that there was no evidence to suggest the Taj Mahal ever housed a temple. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also share this video with your family and friends. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.